everyone and welcome to our second episode of YPC Lunchtime webinar. I'd like to welcome everyone for actually making time to join us today. We have a very awesome panel um, today, actually. We have um, Graham Marsden, we have Refen Molehe, we have Katleko Litualo, as well as Simon Naika. So it's gonna be a very awesome um, discussion this afternoon. Again, we're continuing on the theme that we had initially on goal setting. So now what's different today is that we'll be discussing and engaging with young professionals to sort of bring it home, right? As to, as young professionals, how do they approach their goal setting and how do they approach, um, you know, making things happening and also developing their careers and moving forward. Our first speaker will be Graham. So just introduction around him. He's a technical specialist um, in parametallurgy. Graham is a chemical engineer working in the mining industry. He has been with um, Anglo since finishing university and recently joined the Anglo-American corporate office as a technical specialist in parametallurgy. He's working on capital projects as a process engineer, focusing on implementation of appropriate technologies um, for their various applications. Graham is happily married to Lauren and has two beautiful um, daughters. That's Lily and Riley. Graham, I'd like to open up the floor uh, for your opening presentation. And again, just a reminder to the audience, feel free to put your questions in the Q&A. You can share comments in the chat. And then once opening presentations have been given, then we'll start um, opening up the floor to address and answer those questions as well. Graham, over to you. Afternoon, everybody. Thanks for that introduction, Gondwani. It's always interesting to see how, um, just when someone mentions my kids, my face uh, lights up. So uh, just to confirm, Gondwani, uh, my thoughts on goal setting, how I do it, what I've done, how it's worked for me, is that perfect? Correct, yes, you may go ahead. Okay, all right. So thanks everybody for having me today. Um, it's, quite an, it's quite an interesting topic for me, goal setting. It's one of those things that I'll be honest, when I was young, younger, I never believed in. And it's one of those things which can add tremendous value when done appropriately and correctly. It can also, it can also be a very destructive process if it's not done uh, well. So it's important to have, have support when you're doing goal setting and understanding of what it is that you're doing. So I was very fortunate that I've been with Anglo since we started or since I came out of university and they have a, a development process which requires you to set goals. So that was, it was good for me because it forced me to set goals. I'm not inherently a person who sets goals and targets who I wasn't. And now, now I believe in the process so I do. And so what we, what we did was we had to, we had to set up a, a one-year, a three-year, and a five-year goal target. And as part of your development plan, you set these goals. I think the most important thing which I was told about goal setting is that it should be realistic, uh, it should be achievable, and it should have a time frame to it. So you don't want to set a goal which is, which is 25 years down the line because it's going to be difficult to track and, and, and measure your success against it. So having about very short-term, medium-term, and long-term goals that you believe are realistic for yourself. And once you've set the goals, it's, it's quite important to every now and again go back and evaluate yourself as to how you're doing with those goals. Uh, again, I was fortunate to be part of a process which required us to do that six monthly. Uh, and that worked for me. I think there's some people who like to evaluate their goals on a much shorter term, um, and there's some who like to do it on a longer term. And I think it depends on the level of the goal which you, you're trying to achieve as well. And then the last thing which is very important with goal setting is, is once you set the goal, is to figure out a route map on how you're going to achieve this goal. Because setting a goal means nothing if you don't actively work to achieve it. Right? So nothing, uh, nothing is going to happen to you. Uh, and in a professional environment, actively being involved in that process is something which is very, very beneficial. Right? It's important that you don't actively chase your goals at the, or, or where, where someone else loses or the company that you're working for loses. 
it's important that your goals are aligned and your personal development is aligned with the benefits of the company. And that for me is what's where you get the most buy-in from people to assist you when you need. So if you need to do a course, if you need to do um, a join a committee or you, you need something, then if your goals are aligned, then um, it's generally well received within the businesses and you will get support. So, I mean, just a history on my goals, PP, uh, I never thought I would achieve some of the goals. And very recently, as Kwani said, I, I was appointed into Anglo-American as a technical specialist, which, believe it or not, was my five-year goal seven years ago, I think it was. So it took me a little bit longer, but I think by actively engaging in the process and taking a few steps uh, and, and marking out my route to get there, I think I got there in the end, which is great. The challenge I have now is that I need to set new goals, which uh, is something I definitely need to think about going forward. But in summary, I think it's important to set goals, understand your route of how you're going to get there, make sure they're realistic and have a time, a time limit to them in which you hope to achieve them. Thanks, Mbwani. Fantastic. Thank you for that um, opening presentation. Um, I think one of the things that I caught up as, as you were giving your talk is that there's actually value in having goals that are actually aligned to, to the organization as well. And it's a good thing to, for organizations to actually have um, that drive to push us as young professionals to actually have goals, not only to align with the organization, but I think for our growth as well. That was really awesome. Thank you, Graham. Um, so the next speaker will be Katlejo uh, Lizualo. He's a monitoring and evaluation specialist at uh, Minerals Council of South Africa. So in his um, background, I'll take you through it. So he's a qualified mining engineer um, with a master of science in engineering, majoring in minerals economics. Um, he's passionate about the development of young professionals and the future skills within the mining sector. In 2019, he was selected as one of the young African leaders under 40, um, considered as the next generation of thought leaders from 23 African countries uh, in the minerals and, and metal sector by the University of Cape Town. He was nominated by the Business Unit South Africa to represent organizations at, at the 2019 ILO International Conference on Youth Employment in Nigeria, which looked at policies that could assist global youth unemployment on behalf of global employer organizations. Additionally, listed as a Mail and Guardian Top 200, um, Young South African in Business, Entrepreneurship and Tourism category in 2019, through the work uh, which he completed while leading the Southern African Institute of Mining and Metallurgy, um, which is the YPC um, leg. And currently he serves as the youngest council member in the SIMM. Katlejo, I'd like to hand it over to you. Thanks. Thanks a lot, um, um, uh, Gondwani. I just want to check if my audio is clear, if I can just get a thumbs up. Yeah, we can hear you. you can go ahead. Okay. Thanks. Um, and, and I like what Graham um, uh, mentioned in terms of, you know, goal settings, and I'll probably latch on to some of the elements that he, he um, spoke to, right? I mean, we, we often talk about um, goals and, and setting goals. I just have a few principles in terms of um, goal setting that I often abide by. Um, I think for me, the biggest thing, and you'll probably see why I say this, the biggest thing is I'm less interest, I'm more interested in what um, than the how, right? So when I set my goals, the what needs to be more clearer than the, um, than the how, right? And, and if the what is clearer, then you start getting into a realm where I often say that if you cannot measure it, consider it not done, right? Because the only way you can, you can sort of pick off something off the box is if you can measure it. And if your goals are not clear, then you're going to find that, or if your what is not clear, you're going to find that it becomes so blurry that you cannot even reflect on whether it was done or not. And I mean, Graham touched on this a lot. So quite often I would assume there's a lot of engineers in the room, right? I'm gonna plot us a beautiful linear graph, right? Quite often we, we talk about having smart goals, 
right? Um, basically for me, I mean, there's a lot of school of thought in terms of what are smart goals. But for me, it needs to be clear. You, you need to have a clear understanding of what it is. Um, whether it's a career goal, whether it's a personal life goal, but it needs to be, it needs to be clear. We also then talk about timeline, right? Um, you, you, it cannot be indefinite, right? You, you cannot plan um, indefinitely. You, you definitely need to have timelines behind it. And, and I read something interesting on, on LinkedIn. And I think if you listen to what Graham spoke to, it will also touch on to this, right? Someone said, you are where you are now because of decisions you took five years ago, right? Whether you're a fresh graduate, think about it. Five years ago, you were in the trick thinking about which degree you need to pursue, right? Graham is now um, sitting in Anglo corporate. He, he's a specialist. But if you listened to his timeline, this is something he did seven years ago. It might be two, two years behind, which is something I'll cover now. But it's something he planned um, five years ago. So the thing about goals is that um, you need to have some timeline, right? You, you've got a perfect, you've got your y-axis, you've got your x-axis. On your x-axis, you've got timelines, whether it be age, whether it be years, whether it be in the month, but you need to have some scale behind it. On your y-axis, you've got the specific milestone. And if you plot these, these milestones along, along your linear graph, it then gives you sort of a, a time horizon, right? Grant spoke about five years. So, I've been fortunate enough to have, you know, a couple of mentors in, in, in industry. And I think it's something that I recommend to you guys. So I was advised to work 20 years backwards, right? And one of my, it's still far-fetched and I keep playing it in the back of my mind. So one of my biggest things is to be an executive at 40, well, before 40, right? In one of the biggest mining companies. I, how I get there is immaterial to me, right? But the important thing is in the back of my mind where I've got that end granular point is to get to executive level, right? And everything else will be the in-between, right? And I mean, being a typical runner, how I go about my goals. I mean, if you look at how I, so I run comrades, now and then I sort of test my sanity, right? And this is how you need to look at your life goals, right? On your 20 year time horizon, it's me moving from Maritzburg to get to Durban, right? In your career, you need to say, 20 years from now, I want to get to this level. Or if 20 years is too far-fetched from you, let's look at 10 years from now. Right? 10 years from now, I want to get to Durban and Durban will be your time of reference, right? But what you then need to also understand in the process, I mean, if you look at my graph versus the comrade profile, my linear graph is straight, but the comrade profile is not as straight. But if you look at the overall gradient, right? The gradient is an increase. But in terms of how it goes about, it's something else. And that's where I talk about the how, right? The how is not important, but the what is key, right? So when I get onto the, the, onto the road and the gun goes off, I know that I need to get to Durban, right? How I'm going to get to Durban is a lot of planning and the details that you'll speak about in between. But I know that's where I need to get to. And along the way, I then set, I then set, set milestones for myself right in terms of getting there and, and what i often find is that people look at their goals as a linear process right but unfortunately in life nothing is linear right and 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 whether the goal becomes attainable or not then lies in you appreciating that the gradient is steep but if you look at the different phases they, they vary across board right so you, you then also start bringing in the concept of celebrating your milestones, right? So if we look at Graham, let's say he's sitting at Drummond, he's halfway through his journey. He says, now I need to go back and plan the next phase, right? So hypothetically, his next phase will be, um, let's say, polyshot, for lack of a better. He's not in Durban yet, but he's going to get to polyshot. But Graham needs to appreciate that he managed to move from Berea to Drummond. So quite often when we look at goals, we, we never appreciate the effort that we've gone through retrospectively, right? So halfway through your comrade marathon, you need to appreciate, or halfway through the goal setting in your career plan, you need to say, but hang on guys, as rocky as the journey was, I actually got to halfway through the race. And, and it then sort of makes you say, okay, let me re-get the energy to plan the next half of the race. And I think in, in setting the entire timeline and your goals, you always need to understand 
wherever I'm going, you know, what's the profile looking like? Right. If I get to executive level, you know, there's certain traits that they talk about, there's certain characteristics that they talk about. That's a goal that I aspire towards. But for me to make them more realistic, I then need to say, where am I? What are the skill sets that I'm missing? How do they how do I top them up to make sure that I get to the next phase of, of, of my hurdle? So I think for me, the biggest thing was to sort of highlight the three, you know, three things. Look at it from, from a long-term perspective, you know. I always believe setting goals, set goals from a long-term perspective. If you think about it, where you will be five years from now is entirely dependent on what you are doing now. So when you look at your goals, five years, I go beyond that. I go 20 years, but yeah, it, it, it's all up to your preference. Look at them from a long-term long -term perspective. Forget about the how, because the how is never predictable. But if the what is clear, then you can soldier on. Because quite often, the how is never defined, right? It's, it's, it's part of navigating the process of goal setting. But if it's clear, then I'll get there. Second thing is it needs to be simple enough for you to articulate what the goal is in terms of it being smart. And you then need to be able to, to measure yourself. Because once you stop being able to measure yourself, you then fall into a situation where you heavily criticize yourself and you are not able to see the incremental steps. And I think the last thing in terms of parting shots, um, goals are a process, right? You need to appreciate, like Comrade Marathon, it, it's not about the medal at the end of the day. It's about appreciating the hills and the lows and, and the journey in terms of moving from, from Durban to, to, to Marathon. So look at goal setting the same way. It's, 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 it's around appreciating the journey. It's not necessarily the end point, but it's, it's the journey that sort of makes you a, um, a better person. So those are some of the things I, I wanted to share. If you think about goals, the key takeaway for me is the Comrade Marathon profile. Take it bit by pieces. Don't take the whole chunk, take it in phases, but have a picture of what the end goal would look like. Thanks, thanks Wesley. Thank you, Kaseho. <laughs> I actually felt like you were talking to me personally there. <laughs> No, I'm happy. I, I've come, come to realize that, yeah, no, I've, I've come to realize that as soon as you've achieved your specific goals and you now start looking uh, onto the next goals that will be coming up, we tend to forget to appreciate the journey. So understanding that you've actually conquered quite a lot to get to that point and that should keep you moving to the next, we tend to forget that. And I think that's where also, you know, things like um, where you start questioning yourself if you're doing enough or if you're doing better than you were yesterday you know that's where it starts coming to play so thank you very much um for that okay so our next speaker um will be Rufente Molehe and she's a process uh engineer at Multitech so some background around her she has experience in chrome iron ore coal and manganese or, and her strengths are in research and development, plant optimization, and plant flow sheet development. And she has interests and a current focus on business development, um, new product development, technological commercialization, sales, and marketing. And as you may know, she was also one of the co-hosts in um, the first episode that we had this February. Rifense, I'd like to give you the floor. You're still on mute, Rafense. Okay, perhaps while she um, still addresses that, just to check, you can hear me, correct? Am I audible? Yeah, we can hear okay. you very yes, well. We can. Okay, yeah. fantastic. So perhaps um, let's get Simone um, to present. And then while, while we wait, 
for reference to sort out the audio issues only. And okay, I'll introduce um, Simone. So Simone Naika is a metallurgical engineer currently at Exaro and is also a council member of the SIMM's YPC. Simone is an influencer in mining and metallurgy space and creates content on LinkedIn with the hashtag Simone Says, where she, she also shares um, a range of professional development and motivational content. And she's a believer in driving performance through people. Simone, I'd like to give you the floor. Thanks, Kondwani. Um, just also a thumbs up. Can you hear me? Am I audible? Yes, you're good to go. Perfect, perfect. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm just so happy to be here with you today. And I love the things that Graham and Katlejo said. And I think in the same way that Katlejo built on Graham's, I just have two separate speeches to build on. So I think the foundation is good so we can build very well. Um, Katlejo, you spoke about the what, and it's very important to know what it is you're gonna achieve. So I remember um, being straight out of varsity, a first year engineer in training. And I also um, had this perspective that, you know, give it a couple years, maybe 10, maybe 20. And I also wanted to be an executive. And I, I understand that feeling you have and wanting to, look at where you are now, your behaviors, your traits, and um, looking at the gap between that and the typical behaviors and traits of an executive and constantly striving and developing yourself. You start feeling a little bit like clay or putty because you're constantly reforming, re like redesigning yourself and changing. So I can definitely relate to the what. Um, but I think the big thing for me, um, if I take a look at my personal journey, the what has been quite a lot easier. Um, I knew what it was, but I think it's sticking to the why and actually following through um, with the goal. And I think that's the hard part, or at least what I've seen in, in my personal journey, what has been the difficult part. So knowing what you want to achieve is, is, is one thing, but actually driving toward that. I mean, Graham, you said it took you seven years as opposed to your, your five-year goal. And, you know, uh, I then would want to even ask the question, you know, at the fifth year, how did you feel? And um, how do you, you know, bring yourself back up when you just kind of miss the mark? And when we, you know, don't quite exactly achieve our goals. And I think that's what I want to talk to today. Um, so if you take a look at where our traditional motivation comes from, many of us here on, on the line um, have gone through a traditional schooling system. So we've been, you know, through high school, many of us through tertiary um, education. And the amazing thing about that is we've had the privilege of education, right? But Part of our educational system, especially in our high schools, um, we receive a lot of validation and we look for a lot of validation from our teachers, from our parents. And many of our goals might not even be our own. It may be mom and dad saying, I'm paying for your school fees. You need to come home with good results. I'm going to hit you. I don't know how corporal punishments and things, you know, I think we live in a very different, more liberal world now. But, um, you know, there's a lot of pressure from parents, a lot of pressure from teachers. And sometimes as a result of that pressure, we do very well. And I can give my own um, schooling career as an example. My parents were typical Indian parents, academics were everything, um, you know, push yourself, how, almost my, my, my sense of value and my sense of self-worth was very much linked with, you know, how successful I was academically. And although great, and, you know, you can finish matric with a beautiful report card and um, Exaro, well, in my case, Exaro came along and saw the report card and was like, hey, I think we'd like this engineer um, potentially as part of our company. And, you know, they then gave me a bursary and I went on to university. Now, the university system is very different to the schooling system, where your lecturers actually don't really care whether or not you're there. It's, they're going to present the information, you absorb it if you do, and you write your semester test, write your exams. And 
I think a good example of how, you know, if the goal is to be successful at these um, educational, you know, courses that we've enrolled for, um, it's very different high school to university because there's a lot of self-reliance, a lot of self-dependency. And for those of us privileged enough to, you know, still have our parents pushing, um, yes, that could be great, but it needs to become a lot more internal. And with our parents and teachers, which is where we get to in the work environment, where you may just have a boss or a line manager who might not even care about you that much. Again, the conversation of the why, the internal, um, your own system for validation. So my, my view on goal setting is we can know what we wanna achieve, but if the goal is our parents, or if the goal is actually what we think we should want, because that's also something. You see your peers and your friends, and um, when they get appointed out of graduate programs, you know, immediately Mercedes Benz, BM, you know, all of these cars just start popping up and you feel, wow, okay, I need to be that, that's my goal. Is it really? I think we need to self-check and we need to question whether or not the things that we're trying to achieve are actually things we want, or if it's what our social situation and the people around us are influencing us to want. So just a self-check there is so, so critical. So the point I wanted to make there was, when you have a goal that is yours, and specifically yours, um, your drive and your motivation to achieve it over long periods, like 20 years. I mean, Katlejo, to have a goal for 20 years is a long time. And that's probably because it's your personal goal that you can commit that much of your life in, to achieving that. Um, so definitely you need to link it to what you are passionate about, what your purpose is. And then um, Katlejo, on the, on the roadmap that you showed, um, going the Comrades Marathon and celebrating small wins. I'm so bad at that. And as much as I try, you know, I'll have a you know piece of chocolate or I'll chat with my partner Reese about, um, you know, how wonderful it is and, you know, we'll, we'll celebrate. I think I don't give myself enough credit incrementally. So that is extremely important because I've been you know, through a graduate program and throughout the graduate program, I had so much stress and anxiety about being permanently appointed. And then May last year, bam, off the letter, permanently appointed. And it was something I had so much anxiety about, but I, I feel like I haven't fully celebrated it and understood that part of the goal has been achieved and that I'm there. So please celebrate your goals. And I was having a chat with Reese as well, and he was telling me that you know, how you celebrate your goals is also important. So coming back to socialization, so you don't have to celebrate your goals in the same way as other people. You need to find something that is rewarding to you. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a new handbag, although we all love nice new things. It could be something as simple as giving yourself a quiet breakfast and just taking in that feeling. So Basically, what I'm saying is reward yourself in the best way for you and not necessarily in the way that society says you should reward yourself. The last thing I want to say is about grit. So grit is this crazy concept of sticking to it no matter what. And it's incredibly challenging to develop grit. But, you know, I've also done some reading on what executives and CEOs and you know these people what makes them so successful and it's grit so grit is your ability to sit down and push through even when you don't want to and that's something I'm currently still developing um, simple things can help you develop this I think planking is probably the best way um, to develop grit in a very short period of time because not a lot of us can hold the plank position for more than I think two minutes so that's one way to test your mental resilience um, but definitely look into it do some research there's a lot of information out there on how to develop grit grit will help you stay true and stay on course and 
end up in Durban when you started in Maritzburg, like Katleho was saying. So from my side, I think the main thing I want to say to you is make sure that your goals are your own. Make sure that they're not influenced by society. Make sure, secondly, that you reward yourself incrementally in a way that is right for you. And lastly, focus on developing grit. That's all from me, Gunwani. Thank you very much, uh, Simone. That was really awesome. I think something that <laughs> sort of like themes that are coming up as, as everyone's giving their part is, you know, we moved from the fundamentals of uh, goal setting to the technical aspects, to the psychological aspects. So that is really nice, uh, seeing everyone's diverse views in terms yeah. of how they approach goal setting. So mm -hmm. Refense managed to sort out the issues that she had so I'd like to give her the floor to then um, present to us, Rufense. Thank you so much, my apologies for that. Oh, my goodness, anyway. So yes, yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity. So um, when I started thinking about goal setting and what do I wanna share, I thought, let me just reflect and share a story about one of the goals I worked towards and what it took to achieve it. And hopefully everyone can grab a thing or two from this story. And then I hope it resonates with people, but let's go. So 2017, I decided that I'm gonna work or rather I'm gonna register for my honors with the University of Pretoria, my alma mater, great stuff. And so I registered for um, engineering and technology management. So first thing is that I wanted to get funding. I applied for bursaries. I tried to get funding from the organization I work for and all these avenues I got declined. So I guess that posed the question, how badly do I want this goal of actually getting my honors? And because I knew how it's gonna fit into the bigger picture, I decided that I'm gonna fund myself. The reason why I raised this is that so many people have dreams of studying further or working on a certain dream, but are not willing to actually fund themselves or make the financial sacrifice because that was a big thing. So anyway, moving on, first year was smooth, did everything, did well. Second year is when <laughs> things just turned around and it became such a, you know, a dream that I was, or something that I absolutely loved working towards became something that was just a burden. I raised this because with any dream that you're gonna work towards, you know, how everybody mentioned earlier about it taking seven years, it taking 10 years, it taking 20 years, even if it's taking a week or so, challenges will come along the way and you kind of need to like roll with the punches. So, well, that's what, that's what I thought I was doing. So in my second year, um, yes, so it was so tough. I went through so many personal problems, you know, I'm um, just to name a few is that, in that year, it was my second year. Was it my second year? It was my third year working. So I was trying to work towards getting a promotion. And, you know, I was like, you know what? When the opportunity comes along, I want to be ready. So I was putting time into that as well. So that's a lot of extra hours. Anyone who knows if they're working towards another position, it's a lot of extra hours. And then also as well, I was working towards a different dream at that time, which was becoming Miss South Africa. People think it takes, it's not a lot of work, but preparing for that was just so much work on its own. That's a story for another day. And then one of the other bigger things that I could reflect upon that was challenging in my second year of my honors was that someone close to me um, was going through a mental breakdown and they were trying to commit suicide. So I was their direct support line and just going through that journey with them was so traumatic for me, but also just trying to support them was already another journey of its own. So come August of my second year, there's a portion in the program where there's research. It's research, I can't remember what it's called, but it's generally research. So I meet up with my study leader and he says to me around August, September, that the work that I have done, it's too little for me to be able to finish or to submit on time. So he proposes that, I deregister that module and then reapply for next year. When I think about the finances that I've already paid, yo, that was so stressful. And again, I was not willing to do that. So I left his office and he, in his head, he thought I was gonna deregister. So the work that he felt I fell behind with, I took the next two weeks, fully committed, three to four hours of sleep, no socializing, no nothing. 
to make sure that I have a working document. I went back to him and I said, okay, here's my research. That time, that's the only module that was left. So I was like, go back to him. I'm like, here's my research. I've covered a lot of ground. He's like, but either way, like what you've done is so wrong because you didn't get my guidance throughout the whole year. You only came eight months later, nine months later to get support from me. And someone mentioned, I think it was Simone, that tertiary is different. No one is holding your hand through it. You're actually very much responsible for your own journey. So then um, he refused to even assist me with it. Went to the course coordinator, explained everything. And he actually was on the side of the study leader, but he says to me, I can see how you actually determined to actually get it done and you have a working document. I've never done this before, but I'll give you a different study leader. At this time, I think we left with like three weeks till the last submission, three, two weeks somewhere there. I meet up with my new study leader and you know he goes through everything he's like you really need to deregister because you won't finish i beg him i beg him i'm like i can finish i can do it i believe in myself etc etc and then he's like okay cool i'm gonna give you feedback on this make the changes but understand that after you resubmit it to me if i feel it's below 50 percent i'm going to fail you and in your records you will have a fail and you will still need to repeat it next year. So are you sure you want to go on this journey? I thought about it twice, ne? but I was like, no ways. I've already sacrificed so much and this is something that I really want to do. Cut the story short, I ended up passing the module. Now, the thing is, when you listen to this story, most probably your takeaway from all of this is grit, determination, being fired up and all of those things and making sure I achieve my goal, which is true. Um, I hope you take that away, but I just want to share the things that I took from that. And I think that's the couple of things that I learned about goal setting from that specific goal. So the first thing is for me, when I came out of that journey, you know, I mentioned second year, the second year of my honors was a very hard year personally. It was really, really hard. And anyone who's gone, I think all of us have gone through a tough time. It, it breaks you down. And I think I had numbed dealing with all of that. So what came out of that is a mental breakdown for me. And it took me about eight months to fully recover from just sacrificing the time, not getting enough sleep and not dealing with everything that was happening around me. And I developed a lot of panic attacks from that point on. Well, obviously they developed within the second year, but they prolonged, that time was maybe 20, 18, but they prolonged until maybe 2020. That was the last panic attack I had. But so out of that, I got that. And then I asked myself, and oh, another big thing as well, it broke so many relationships as well. So I asked myself, um, what, what was it worth? Why didn't I just add a couple of years? And this is where I want to share the last three points of what's important about goal setting. Because for my undergrad, it took me six years to complete what should have been a four-year degree. I still had that lingering failure in me. And I was like, I'm not going to fail at my honors. And because of that, one thing I want to highlight is deal with past failures. Whatever you consider as a failure, deal with it. Because when you don't deal with it, it kind of impacts the new goals that you're working towards. The second one is to pace yourself. We're really all on our own journey. Do not compare it to anyone else because it will look different. The path will look different. You might be working towards something similar to your neighbor, but the path will completely be different. And the last one is to seek balance. It's so important to always check in with yourself. How am I feeling and what do I need at this time? So I do, in retrospect, I feel like in that moment, what I should have done was definitely to ask myself, how was I feeling? And how I was feeling is that I really needed the extra year to pace myself. So this has really guided so many of the goals that I work towards. And now every goal that I've achieved ever since this one traumatic experience has always been from a place of love. A last thing that I want to raise is that goals, it's not about just finishing like metric. Goals is really about something that's beautiful to you, something that's important and personal to you. And it's not, sometimes it's not really about achieving the goal, but the process of it. So it's important to make sure the process is as fulfilling as actually achieving the end goal. So yes, that's my two cents about goal setting. Thank you, Gondani.
Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Um, yeah, it was really insightful. Perhaps, or maybe before we go into the Q&A, I'd like to ask all the panelists to turn the cameras on, but still keep muted. And then you can just unmute when you um, want to respond to a question, for example. Um, as you were speaking, Rufense, I was just thinking to myself, there are oftentimes, yes, we come across challenges or we fail. And again, as people, we grow, we change, and we find new interests or maybe want to move in new directions. So when do you draw the line in terms of a goal that's just not realizing? And I mean, if you look at Katlejo's scenario, if it's a 20-year goal, and in year 15, you realize this age doesn't cut it. When should one draw the line? So perhaps I can start with you, Fente. Thanks. Um, you know, I think how you set goals is also important. For me, goals are always come from a place of what I feel is within my purpose. And a lot of times, the things that's prompted in your heart, the things that you're interested in, that's the direction you should go with your goals. I think the biggest thing is what Simone was speaking about. Who are you pursuing this goal for? Is it for someone else or is it for you? One thing when it comes to drawing that for me, how I've always applied it, how do I draw the line? I never really draw the line, but I always adapt because you learn from you. The thing is for I always say, keep making the, the right next decision for a goal. So you might be going in a certain direction, but you can see, no man, these results are not adding up. And then you actually ask yourself, what's the next right move for the specific goal? So I don't think I've ever drawn a line to say this is not the goal, but then somehow it's always, the goal has always evolved into something different, but it has never ended because especially if you're speaking or picking goals that resonate with your heart and things that you feel are within purpose. So so I don't think I've ever ended a goal, but it has just evolved into something else. Fantastic. Um, so there's two questions so far that have come in, one for Simone and the other is general. So I actually want to take the first general question to Graham. So the question there, just give me a second. Okay, so it says, Simone mentioned something about mental resilience. Um, so how do you test your mental resilience when it comes to goal setting? Again, um, Graham, I think you mentioned how your goal moved from it initially wanting to achieve it in five years, but then it happened in seven years. How do you maintain that mental resilience and also how do you test it? That's, uh, I think that's what it means to be a human at this point, Gondwani. Um, I really like what Simone said about uh, if it's if it's personal to you, then it's it's much easier to adapt and take the short hits, right? So we, Katlevo spoke about celebrating the small victories along your path, whether it be winding a straight line, however you get there. It's also about giving yourself a break when things start going on a downhill, right? So celebrate your successes absolutely, but give yourself a break if if something negative happens, right? And realize that, like Katleho said, it's not a straight line, it's ups and downs and they will come. And that mental resilience is not something which we're born with. And it's not something that you can just pick up off the shelf. It's unfortunately one of those things that you have to go through to learn. And it's not easy, but I think if I could say two things uh, along the lines of what people have said today, it's celebrate the little wins, and give yourself a break when things don't quite go the way you'd planned. Thank you very much, Cam. That's, that's actually true. I think celebrating is really important, especially to maintain that mental sanity, right? Okay, so the next question from AJ. Um, so it goes, greetings to the host and panelists. Um, delving a bit into what Simone Neka mentioned, how does one maintain that motivation towards achieving goals? Um, various factors contribute to motivation and sometimes many aspects that can leave a major impact and derail or off track you from your goals. And then in terms of your professional goal setting, how do you factor a gap period, especially after graduating to, um, to now working in the industry of your, your field of study? So maybe the initial part, uh, Simone, I can give that to you. 
which is how do you maintain motivation towards achieving your goal, especially now when you look at all other factors that may come and try and derail you? Yeah, no, thank you for the question, Ajay. Um, so the thing is, life happens. And in order to keep the conversation clean, I can't use adjectives to describe life because it's really, really messed up. Um, you know, something so simple, like your best friend ends up dating your ex-boyfriend, your parents pass away. Um, you know, I, I can't even describe to you the number of things that can go wrong because life COVID. itself is just, yeah, COVID. Um, just there's so many things that can go wrong right and how you or how I stay somewhat sane I won't give myself a full sanity diagnosis there's a little bit of crazy in there and I think that's why I can continue and maintain it's because I accept that sometimes things are going to be really bad and I'm going to absolutely hate it I mean I'm not always in a in like the best happy clappy kind of mood but what I will say is I'm always grateful and I think being grateful for the stuff that I can control is how I, I, I maintain mental sanity and resilience so that I can continue toward the goals and I also find that when you have a goal in silence in your head on a piece of paper on your computer and you're the only person who knows about it that's very little accountability. And it's almost like when you're busy writing on a piece of paper your goals and you keep it to yourself, basically sometimes I feel like that's a bit of a scapegoat. It's like saying, oh, you know, no one's gonna ask me about this. Even if I don't achieve this, I've only written it in my little diary um, and I'm the only one who'll be disappointed in me. And unfortunately, we're social creatures. We were designed to live together. We were designed to grow together and be together. And, you know, that's why COVID was so difficult as well, because we were in isolation and separate. And I think we should learn something from that. You know, you need people. You need accountability. And it can be something as simple as a good colleague at work. Chat with them. Say, you know, actually... I'm obese and um, unfit, but I have Katlejo's vision and I think I want to run the comrades one day, okay? And make those little steps. Get, get, a, get someone to run with you. Get an accountability partner. I know Katlejo also mentioned, um, and Refense, I think you talk about it a lot in your content as well, mentorship. Um, find someone who's done it okay, who's, who's doing okay, who's done it right and ask them how. People are actually more open to conversation than you think. It's really not just you in your office, in your bedroom alone, reach out. And I mean, I think that's why Kundwani, as the YPC, we're, we're having these discussions. I mean, all, all five of us here, um, as well as there's a whole technical support team behind the scenes, you know, we could all just be having coffee and cake and going on with our day. But we're here because these conversations are valuable and we want to support our environment. So definitely in order to maintain your goals, have accountability partners and understand that life can be terrible and that the aim is not actually to have a perfect life, but rather to be resilient enough to say, this is what I can control and this is what I'm going to focus on. So that's my, my response to RJ. Oh, sorry, last thing, Graham, um, what you were saying about resilience and how you're not born with it. I can imagine resilience as like a little muscle, like in your shoulder or somewhere. And I know Kondwani gyms a lot, uh, Rufense as well. I'm not sure about you, Graham and Katlejo, like if you've been pumping iron as well, but I know Rufense is very fit and so is Kondwani. And, um, I'm sure they can also tell you it's muscles, it's reps. I don't know how many times you need to lift a dumbbell in order to get the muscle right. And it's the same thing with resilience. It's a baby muscle until you exercise it. So yeah, just a comment on that. Fantastic. Thank you, Simon, for that analogy. <laughs> and I actually resonate with what you're mentioning. I think building that good support structure, having that mentor is something that really helps in terms of improving
that mental resilience and everything. And I think the second part of AJ's question, I wanted to take it to Katleho to say, okay. So the second part was that in terms of a professional goal setting, how would you factor a gap period, especially after graduating, to now working um, in the industry of your field of study? And the reason why I want to bring it to Katleho is if you're gonna have a 20 year goal, I'm pretty certain there'll be gaps in between maybe retrenchments or maybe, I don't know, illness, but there'll be things that might hinder you in that 20 year period. So how do you factor all that in when you now set that goal, whether it's long-term or short-term? Thanks, Thanks um, Kondwane. Just, just before I answer that, right? I think the first thing is every crisis presents an opportunity, right? Whether it's a forced gap or a default gap, um, look at it in a sense that it presents an opportunity. And the reason why I say this, I mean, I often don't talk about my bio, right? And I'm like Simone, I always get hard on myself. People say, look, you've done so much, but you never talk about. And, and, and one of the things, I mean, if I said to someone, I was retrenched do, during the diversification of one of the big mining companies. I mean, you know, one couldn't even tell. I mean, career was looking great. Um, you know, one of the best graduates and, Things were looking good, but unfortunately, due to business decisions, you know, they had to cut a certain portion of the of the business, right? I could have gone and been miserable. I mean, that put me in some sort of gap, but I saw that as an opportunity in a sense that, look, my career took a different path. I mean, if you ask a bulk of the mining engineers, half of them didn't sort of take the journey that I took, but it, it was all about the, re the resilience, right? And, and at that point in time, I think the biggest question I always ask myself when I go through a challenge is that two things, right? And I mean, panelists spoke about it. There's certain things I can control. There's certain things I cannot control, right? And what do I focus on? And what I often find is that people by default go into the things that they cannot control, right? And they forget that they've got so much power in the things that they can control. I mean, already you having a degree, right? Sets you apart regardless of what degree it is, right? sets you apart from 56 other million people in the country, right? How do you harness that to then take you in the, into the next step? So in, in any phase of the career, yes, I've got a 20 year plan. It's, and, and one thing I definitely know is that it's not gonna go according to my plan, but I've got milestones in it. And, and that's why I focus on the milestones rather than how I get there, right? Because if I focus on how I get there, I'll get frustrated, right? So the biggest thing is, in the gaps, right? What do you do with the gaps? And, and how do you use the gaps to your advantage, right? Some of the people who are working want that one year off of working, right? But you've got it. How are you using it differently from everyone else? So I think the biggest thing is when you look at the gaps, don't look at them as sort of regression in the entire plan, but look at them as an opportunity to reflect and say, I've got this time, I've got this phase in my life. How do I capitalize it or to help me propel into the next phase? I think it's, it's just a mental shift. And if you take everything that was you know, said earlier on in terms of making the goals more personal, then it becomes easier to, to soldier on during the tough times. And I mean, I'm not oblivious. We, we all get um, stumbling blocks in our careers, right? But the only thing that can keep us going is whether or not our long-term plan is really what we really want. And I mean, also about mentorship, just to touch it a bit, you are only as strong as your support team, right? And, and I mean, a few of you guys might know it, right? Billy often, Billy Mawasha often says to me, you cannot do conventional and expect unconventional results, right? You cannot do what everyone else is doing and expect a different result. So it, it, it's always important to, in the, in the period of break or in the period of regression, tap into your support system. And I can tell you now, guys, even the CEOs have their own mentors. So it doesn't matter how high up you are in terms of organizational structure, everyone has a support system around them, both in the professional environment and in the social environment. So that's important. When you go through the gaps or the regression, tap into that support system. Yeah, I hope I covered it with you. Oh, you covered it very well. Thank you very much, um, Katejo. Graham, I see your hand is up. Yeah, thanks, Kundwani. I, I mean, I really agree with everyone and what they've said so far. I, 
I think one thing which we haven't necessarily discussed directly is goals in your personal life, right? So we've discussed a lot about professional goals, but having goals in your personal life is also important, right? So I had goals of marrying my, at the time, girlfriend, right? I wanted children. I wanted uh, this. I wanted, I now want to get my kids into a good school, right? And, and those two sets of goals need to talk to each other, but they can also be used to support each other. So if you have a gap at one point in, say, your personal goals, um, for whatever reason, you, uh, or, or your work goals, you can work on your personal side of things, right? And it's important that those two go together because, yes, we are, we are work creatures, but we also have families and loved ones at home which we want to spend time with. And, and most of us, well, I'm not saying most of us, I know I work simply to better my, my family's future, right? That's why I work and the generations that come after me. So to see the two in isolation is, is sometimes not right. In my mind, having personal goals and career goals and aligning the two that they can support each other is also something that can help in those uh, gap periods. That's actually quite um, powerful, Graham, what, what you mentioned. I think it's, it's, yeah, it is definitely very important to have the two align, the personal goals as well as our professional goals as well. And when you talk about marriage, <laughs> I think growing up, majority of us uh, had the idea that by 25 or so, you know, you'd have everything, career sorted out, you'd be married, you have kids. And then as you grow up, you realize that actually there's far more challenges that you have to first conquer before you get to reach that point. And again, if you don't have that goal, there's nothing that you can measure against, right? So you can't really necessarily track it, which brings me to the next question um, by Amanda. So the question is, before readjusting and re evaluating one's goals, there's always an assessment that allows uh, one to measure their progress. So what references can one establish as the benchmark to measure that progress? I'd like to open it up so anyone can, can go ahead and answering that first. So what references can we establish to measure progress for our goals? Can I give it a try? Maybe say... Oh, sorry, let me just okay, give it a grab. try. So, oh, Is oh, it sorry, you, I, Yes. Yeah, it's me, sorry. Okay, so go I, ahead, I, I, I don't want to give a specific reference, right? Because the danger in giving a specific reference or whatever benchmark I share, it doesn't become personal. So it, it's now what's that person measuring and how do I translate it to you? I think I always say, if you understand what you want, then it will be easier for you to measure it. Let's say you want an appointment, right? In, I don't know, in your career, you want to get it. Let's say you want to get a permanent, you want to get out of graduate program and go into a technical role, right? You then need to understand for me to be appointed as a technical person, what does it mean, you know, if, it doesn't mean understanding and showing competency in terms of, you know, if I'm a metallurgist, how the plant functions, if I'm a mining engineer in terms of understanding how to run the full production cycles and some of the bottlenecks. So it's, it's, it's all about saying if it's personal to you and you understand, you fully understand what it is you want, then it will become easier to say, okay, for me to get an appointment, I need to be able to produce more tonnages. Then you start measuring yourself to say, how many tonnages am I producing in the work environment? Your goal is to get appointed in the next level. But in terms of measurement, for you to get to the next level, you need to produce um, results from a production perspective. Then you start measuring yourself to say, as an individual, what is my contribution to the broader production value chain? I don't want to say go and look at document Y or document X, because that will speak to scenario Y goals and scenario wide deliverables, which are not necessarily aligned to you as, as a person. I just wanted to, to flag that. Um, I'd like to contribute to that. So I would say um, a couple of ways. Firstly, I, I would say you are your own benchmark and that's generally what Katleho was saying. I think when you aim to be the best version of yourself, your previous 
your previous achievement will be the benchmark and then you always want to outdo yourself from the previous one. But secondly, um, if this is your first time setting this goal and you don't have an idea, I would always say look into other people who have done it and then understand why those things were set as the benchmark. Because sometimes if it's the first time you do need a reference point and I, I, would, I would say mentors even can guide you on that when you're saying I want to move into this role even if it's a personal one like you know we're speaking about marriage if you want to get married get an idea of how much everything costs before you get married you know and you speak to people who've done it before you and then so there's always a reference point if you've never done it before if it's your second marriage I'm sure you'll figure it out but if it's your first one I just say you can speak to people so there's that and then um, the last one as well is whoever is decide who's the decider to give you that opportunity so I what I mean by that is that if you're looking towards a promotion like moving from a process engineer into a senior process engineer there are people who decide those things so you sit down with a decider to be like I want to achieve this what are what are you what is your criteria for me to achieve this the same way as when we study these you must meet certain credits and you work towards those credits before you move ahead so I'll say you are your own benchmark speak to people who've done it before you and then lastly, speak to the deciders, then that's a good reference point. You'll be covered then. Thank you everyone for your contributions. I think um, what I've also come to realize is, as Graham had raised that most of our calls that we've discussed were very professional. And I also kind of resonate why that is the case. Um, if you had joined us, on the first um, episode, the past two weeks, is that from the presentations and the talks that were given by some of the executives is that there was that strike in balance in terms of some of their personal goals as well as some of the professional. But if you look at the focus, I think we're still young, we're still hungry, we're still developing. So you do find that most of our goals are professionally driven because we still want to make them for ourselves. We still want to get to a certain um, level in our career. I think once we get to that level, then we start looking at other things. Okay, what do I need to develop in as an individual? What do I need to build in place and so on? But I think there's merit in actually building a synergy between the two. So I think in terms of us wrapping up, I want to just go around the table to say, how well have you incorporated your personal goals um, in relation to your work environment? Is there that synergy? or is it goals that speak at different things, but still taking you to the same direction? Maybe let me start with you, Simone. Hi, Konani. Um, I was the most unbalanced person I, <laughs> I knew. Um, for the first, I think, three years of my career, it was all work and no play. And yes, it made me a very dull person. Um, I really, I was just on site all the time and glorifying, you know, um, working on Sundays and being on site. And I think I, I pushed myself so hard that I broke. And when I was able to pick up the pieces, I found more balance. And so even when I have a chat, I mean, we have brilliant PITs, um, you know, engineers and training here on site. And, you know, whenever I get a chance to talk to them, I think it's my responsibility to then share with them that it's actually not the right way to do it. So I went full force hard and I um, really was not balanced. But I think now I, I knock off when I'm supposed to knock off. When it's Chayila, it's Chayila, I'm out. You'll see my, me in the car and getting to the gates. Um, and I think trying to make sure that I stay within my working hours, being effective at work, um, it's all very new to me. I'm still learning. Um, but it, as we said, it's a journey. And I'm definitely incorporating more balance by sticking to my working hours and by being as effective as I can be at work and just, I think, planning for during working hours and trying to keep the two very separate. I think especially if you live alone, um, you know, it's that thing of, oh, I can stay another hour, I can stay another two hours, but actually you shouldn't. You should go get into the gym, go buy groceries, go do life things. And I think that is essential. It's critical, in fact. So, yeah. 
Awesome. Thank you for that. So Graham has to um, exit. Graham, thank you for, for joining us and giving us your inputs as well. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Have a good day. Awesome. Catch you in closing. So, sorry, um, yeah, Wesley, in closing, I think you said, look, it's a constant, it's a constant battle, um, just trying to find that um, balance. Um, and I guess there's a lot of sacrifices that one takes um, along the way. Um, just from a personal perspective, I think it's around finding, finding the balance. So I can't say one has fully understood the balance, but yeah, it's like a constant, it's a constant process of trying to find that work-life, work-life, balance so i guess it's, it's it's a constant juggling exercise but i guess with time and experience then one one would say they get more comfortable with it but yeah it's still a it's still a constant battle that one deals with on a daily basis Katleho, executives take breaks i know you want to be an executive but executives take breaks too <laughs> They are not true. Um, thanks, Gondane. You know what, Ne? Like I said, you know, I shared a, a story about the journey to my master's. Yo, personally, I think I'm the most balanced time ever. Like that, that was such a traumatic period in my life. I like it took me, yes, it's 2022. That happened in 2017. So it took me a lot of time. I agree with everybody. But how I've seen myself, and I I Listen, I have way more be beyond um, career goals. Like career goals are very small in comparison to the things that I'm working towards when it comes to my goals. I really think that the one thing that I believe in is, the, you know, the triangle of mind, body and spirit. So I have goals for my body. I do not compromise on working out because I realize I'm more efficient when I have had time to actually take a walk, take a run. And then also I do something for my mind, which is mainly the things that are surrounded around my career and reading and empowering myself. And I do something for my spirit, which is in my faith and don't miss Sundays. So what I can say is that if you base it on these three things and you try to work out the balance, you'll fail a lot of times and sometimes you'll get it dry, sometimes you'll get off balance. But it, like I said, you know, I shared the story about my honors because it was really a life, that was one of the biggest turning points in my whole entire life. So balance is a big thing for me and I'll always work towards getting it back. No goal, no dream is worth compromising your health and relationships. That's something I learned in 2017. It's not worth it at all because at the end of the day, like you mentioned, we need people. We don't need only people towards our goals, but we need people to enjoy this life. So balance is a big thing. So that's that's just me. I always, those are the three things I prioritize. Fantastic. Thank you, everyone. So before we end, I actually want to read some of the awesome comments that we've been getting um, in the chat room. The first one is from Joe. And um, Joe says that, thank you to all panelists for sharing your lived experiences and goal setting strategies. I personally appreciate this kind of platform I, um, and I learned a lot. Keep up the good work. Well, though, we'll be having more of this type of engagements this year. So definitely enjoy, um, join us and invite um, your world as well to, to actually participate with us. Um, the next comment um, from, it's from Freeman. So it's while medium and long-term goals are important we should always allow or we should always allow us to be curious and open for new ideas redirection is frequent in career development and few technical experts actually knew where they would end up um, by the by the time they started studying so you may be headed to peter Murray's back but at some point you find yourself on table mountain so we need to be agile i guess we need to be willing you know, to, to change course, but also reevaluate. So let's not be, um, let's not only focus on that one path. Let's appreciate the fact that life can take us at different paths as well. Um, Kutso also shared a comment. You only get one, one shot at life um, and it's short. And COVID highlighted this aspect. So career goals are great, but live too, which is definitely quite true. 
we need to make sure that we are living, we're enjoying life, but we are also developing moving forward. So thank you to thanks to everyone for joining us for making time to have your lunch with us. Um, you can follow the, our panelists. They're all on LinkedIn. They're all quite active. Well, Katleho still needs to push a bit. <laughs> but thank you again for making time. And yeah, join us after this. It's, so the, the, the sessions will be happening every second Wednesday. So our next session will be on the 9th of March. And the theme there will be around human rights. Most importantly, your right to safety. So have an awesome day further and thank you for joining us and thank you to our panelists as well as well as SAMM for allowing us this opportunity thank you for hosting us Gonzani. yes we enjoyed it thank you <laughs> <laughs> yes everyone Bye.